James Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're doing a subject, let's not use the blue, I'm always using the blue, um, we're doing the subject on torque and horsepower but more to do with torque. So I always say in live streams and in all these videos I say torque is what matters, forget horsepower and especially in engine design you focus on the torque, it's all about the torque, it's rod um, it's stroke to bore relationship, CC, blah blah, this, that and the other, angles, leverage, piston location, spark advance, all this kind of shit. But all this is all to do about torque. So why is torque important and why is horsepower not important? Right? The reason why, I'll do it really, really quick for those who just want a fucking three second video and then fuck off. Um, torque is to do with forces, torque is more of a fundamental, um, well it's a fundamental force in a sense, of an actual engine, where horsepower is after the fact. Horsepower is what it can actually do with that torque. Now that still doesn't clear it up, so let me put it this way. You design an engine to have a specific torque curve, you design an engine to have a specific RPM range and all the rest of it. There is no torque <laughs> about power. Power is what you get afterwards, so basically you design an engine with torque and RPM in mind and then when you've actually done that you then run the dyno test to find out what it, how it actually works. Have you succeeded in what you're doing? So that's why it's important. Full stop. But for those who still want to hang around and understand exactly what I'm talking about, um, torque is a force around a rotational centre. So when you basically apply a force around uh, instead of linearly because most forces are all linear so you have a central point here and then at a distance um, when you uh, apply torque here at a certain distance and we'll call this distance one meter and we apply force and force is applied in newtons so we'll call this one newton now when we talk about torque it's the unit of measurement is the force and then the distance from the center so that's one newton meter. That's what that's what we'd measure it as. But you've got to remember this force has been applied, and because it's a circle, it basically just keeps on going round and round and round like that. Now, what some people have said in comments and emails to me is they don't understand how the next thing works. You come further out to here, another meter, from there to there, there to there, and there to there. So we've got two meters now. So all together that's two meters and we apply one newton there then what we record here at the center isn't one newton meter on this circle it's two newton meters and what people don't understand is well if surely if you want more torque and if torque and rpm is everything just have bigger whatevers around the circle you know what I mean? Just keep on going because you've got power from nowhere. You've got enough power, you've got force from nowhere and if you keep the RPM the same then you're going to have power from nowhere. We've got one newton meter out here, if we do it here we've got two newton meters. What the fuck is going on? Well, this is the description of work because work, power, is something that's happened, right? You can do theory, theory all the time. When we measure, basically you can sit there and draw and work out and do loads of maths and still that engine and say it's bore stroke, if the combustion is this, the heat gradient is this, blah, 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 the BMEP is this, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden you can say, well, theoretically this engine should have this. But then you have to stick that engine on a dyno and physically make it do it. Because you cannot really measure work until something has actually been done in the real world. So... The thing with work is, is that just say for our horsepower, our horsepower is calculated by torque, metric or imperial, it doesn't matter, torque times our RPM. Why? Because revolutions, because it's torque, it has to be. So torque has to be times the revolutions bit and the per, per, the minute. And it's the minute bit that's important, right? Because that is time. So all work, you can apply a force to something and if you continually apply a force to something there is no measurement of anything being done until something's actually moving. So, so the best way to look at it is like this. We have our uh, centre point here 
that we are applying a force to this out at one meter like before and it's one newton that we're applying this so this whole thing is one newton meter right but now we want to know the work that has been done let's just say that we can apply this force this much we can turn that much 90 degrees we can turn 90 degrees fucking helicopters 90 degrees and it takes one second to do this now if you do exactly the same thing out here at two meters you're applying the same newtons we're doing it at two meters now but if we applied the same for the same amount of time we'd end up about there at 45 degrees right that's where we'd end up if we did exactly the same thing apply the same amount of force for the same amount of time this is one second so then everything is perfect now you have basically applied the same force around the pivot the same amount of torque but it's taken you the same time so why does it well if you actually look at this distance here this distance and this distance are the same distance so a and b a equals b and that's why the distance you have shoved something rotated something turned something whatever is the same so even though you are applying two meters well oh, fucking hell even though you're applying two meters to do the same amount of work uh, you're applying you know two newton meters of torque you would have to spend twice as long doing it so you are not getting anything free from anywhere. There's no point just having massive sprockets, massive wheels, massive gearing, you know, to try and get the most torque out of things. And it's the same thing with our crankshaft. You know, our crankshaft is basically just rotating, it's rotating round is our crank pin. And if you have a shorter crank pin, a shorter stroke, then you will have less torque. If you come further out, you'll have a bigger leverage so you can apply more torque at the actual crank center. However, it is going to take you twice as long to go around a full circle. So, your um, your torque and your oh, fucking board rubber, your torque and your speed seesaw. You know what I mean? So if you have um, torque here and you have RPM here, you know we're on a balance here. If you go further out, you push this further out, and you get more torque you're going to have to see sort of bigger distance for the same RPM at this end to tick away. If you come in closer, you can have faster RPM. And it's just this shifting, you're shifting the center of the fulcrum, in a sense, that's the way to think about it. So that is the relationship between, because people are asking, how come if you, if you have a bigger lever, you get more torque at the, measured at the center, why don't you just have a massive lever and away you go? Well, because then it takes you, you know, you have to, um, have more displacement you know you have to put more work in if you're wanting to twist something the same amount of degrees so if you think about it you can have a spanner and you're like turning here if you put a massive bar on it you can turn shit loads to undo something but if you notice that's a lot more that's a lot more displacement that's a lot more distance that's a lot more work required so you are not cheating and you cannot cheat that way the um, whole point of engines in a sense is exactly this it is a balance it's finding the right amount of torque to the right amount of also, uh, rpm and all the rest of it um and you know when in bikes we look at acceleration and people ask a lot what's the difference between cars and bikes is that cars require more torque um because they have you know the higher rolling resistance they weigh more they're literally cross-sectionally wider so they're harder to push through the air when you actually get up to speeds Cars require more torque um, than bikes that can have higher RPM. And if you actually have a look at your car, you know, you might have a fancy car, but it goes up to 9,000 RPM. You know, 9,000 RPM red line, that's it. Red line, that's your lot. 9,000 RPM, for a lot of bikes, that's nothing. You know what I mean? Hope that makes sense. Um, we'll do more and more on this, but that's just showing you the circles and all the rest of it, the relationship to it. You might go out further, but you have to do more work or whatever. And I'll see you in a bit. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.